Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. In the last couple of videos I've been making these medallions or pendants or discs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and I, last week I intended to move on to the infinite axis chuck, which uh, is this, and do a revisit of it uh, structurally, but uh, instead I caught a cold or COVID. I don't know which. The test was negative. The doctor says it's very hard to tell if you're fully vaxxed and boosted like I am. So trying to get over it. But uh, anyway, so all I could do this week was another medallion, this time with three centered discs and a large hole through it. So it's a little bit different style and uh, I'll get on to other things next week. So let's turn this one. The first item of business is to mount my background wood, sycamore, to my work platform. Since the work platform is a renewable surface, I want to use regular wood glue. By renewable, I mean that after I have finished and parted off the project, I can resurface the platform. If necessary, I also add another layer of sacrificial wood. Since the shop temperature is cool, I will wait an hour for the glue to dry before more action. It, that is time to go in the house and warm up or do another project. In summer, I would wait 30 minutes. The glue is sufficiently solid to do some light tooling. A sizing disc on the live center provides pressure and security since the glue is not quite at full strength. I have added a set of these discs from 1 to 3 inches to my accessory kit. These fit to my 60 degree cone center. For this project I will keep the offset chuck locked down at one setting. I am using a one and a quarter inch Forstner bit for a hole entirely through the background disc. Yes, it does go into the work platform, but this is renewable. Then I go inside where it is warm enough for epoxy to set. I am using epoxy in case I have any looseness. The clear epoxy will cover any gaps nicely but it likes to be warmer than my shop. Even with 5 minute epoxy, I waited an hour for the epoxy to fully set. I do not want it to be sticky at all. This time, I am using the offset chuck while trimming off the excess. Although the chuck is offset, my paddock insert is running true. I could also mount the work platform to my auxiliary screw mount, but then the insert would be offset. Either way works. This time, since I am not adjusting the offset chuck, I am using it. I do not need a perfect surface yet. Then drill a 1 inch hole for my maple insert. Again, this goes entirely through the background and into the work platform. Not a problem. Back inside for a warmer environment for another epoxy session. An hour later, the epoxy is well set and I can part off the excess. Again, I do not need a perfect surface yet. Now drill a 3 quarter inch hole for the final walnut insert. Back inside to get warm for the epoxy. The epoxy is well set. I need to trim it back and face off the surface. I do need a perfect surface this time. Now for the backing walnut. I have another work platform with the double stick tape ready to go. This time I will make the sandwich in one operation. I put glue on the walnut backing. Whoops, I almost forgot the final sanding of the faced off disc. Then put my sandwich together, making sure no glue wanders over to the double stick tape side. I let this harden at least an hour at this temperature. Once the glue is dry, I can trim the walnut backing and part off the sycamore disc from the original work platform. After facing off the disc, I take the time to thoroughly sand the disc. I will be cutting additional features on this side, however right now everything is concentric and easy to sand. Later I then will only need to sand the features. Now to remount the disc onto the offset chuck still at the same setting. I want to cut an indentation on top of the concentric inserts. A round nose scraper will do great. Then sand out the freshly cut area. I will take a moment now to mark a desirable location for a mounting hole. It will give me a target for the next chuck adjustment. 
After adjusting the chuck to the new axis, I want to drill a half inch hole for a mounting lark's head knot on a cord. That will make it perfect for a necklace. Then with a quarter inch round nose scraper, I flare out the edges of the hole. Then sand the edges of this mounting hole. I'm ready now to finish the backside. I put double stick tape on another work platform, then line things up for tr to transfer. Since there is tape on both sides of the disc, I carefully apply denatured alcohol to the face side of the disc. This failed, but I am able to carefully place the disc on the new platform. This will be good enough for sanding, or so I thought. Oh well, I need to mount a sanding pad to the lathe so I can finish my sanding. Now for some shellac for finish followed by a good buffing. Not everything worked as planned, but in the end the result is pretty. With the hole in addition to the inserts, this is a great pendant for a necklace, or it can be adapted for many other applications. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends about my videos. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I add a new wood turning video to my website. Always please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. It is your last line of defense as it was mine years ago. I'll see you in again next week.